On the 16th of June, God gave mankind a special gift in the form of a man. Not just an ordinary man, but a king, a philanthropist, and an academician par excellence. Ah, Honorable Kennedy, Kwame Akwamprako in Japan. Today we are here to say thank you and I equal for your great and good words. Today, the blind man you've been looking for every day to give money says you are his eyes and life. The thousands of homeless children he feed says you are the reason for their existence. The aged and the orphan says you are their guiding angel. Your hands are as soft as the sparkling wool. Giving is in your genes. Lifting up of the destitute is your prime goal. Your smile Bright, glows, and brings life into the sunken eyes of the forsaken soul. Ah, Honorable Kwame Kennedy, a compare Japan. The skies bear witness to your soft heart, which yearns to see humankind live in absolute love and pursuit common good for all. Your heart is brilliant and sent you into quagmire when you see the sufferings of the masses. You are misunderstood and sometimes denigrated and subjected to scorn. But you conquer them all. For in their conscience, they know that you always stand tall. Grandpa, honorable, I'm a petite sire. So I hope you do, so I hope you do, and I will swear you. I am. Ah, Daddy, I will assure you as I saw identity on the mountain. Oduma kuma, oduma kuma. You always yearn to see a world where there is equity, a world where the downtrodden will be lifted up by those who have it. Your heart is as soft as the effigy of love. Ah, Grandpa, I would say, why some man you dead? Love conquers and surpasses all. Ah, Honorable Kennedy, Kwame Akonpreku, a Japan. Piti primotum amenwa. Oh ho. Potom promotum amenwa. Oh ho. Imbriki si potum amenwa. Oh ho. Awa i your katabana. What shrubutin asede. Did you yet turn to Pana? You see, as I see for what we suit him, what happened for that? Get the other way, the war, my dozen war, Zizi, won't we pass it? Ah, Grandpa, I want everybody to have Zizi in Benin and she, she shut in the pump a woman. Ah, honorable Kennedy, call me a comparable in Japan. What in Kennedy ya a throw on back a son? Let's a man bear a bay ya, no chin and a bay son for do. A rabble was so was so a young woman, or ye a cool, cool son. Jago a face, what shall who in penis on two weeks? At a train upon a yet son, in to say a chitrama up or down, and Cassa Abba. O sande ne pone biara ya daku. In this son ring a coupon de bo biase na ushre. Ah ah ah, son don't fret fret ya. O mani rich a when you to, they say ni wa we siao. This goes to the youth. Grandpa always say, 
confidence, with determination, you turn your adversities into opportunities. And we saw above light trials like a majestic eagle flying in the sky. Ah, wrong path. In day of winter, to where you are, Nami in shrub, a moon quat sinsin, na a jen kasi. Ah, a potsum, a dawbo, yen mangana hoba. Ah, on your book, and a kwami, a compreco, a japon. I have been to the world from I have dwarf. Please, I want you all to join me and sing a beautiful, pretty, handsome, happy birthday song for Grandpa. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And still with a standing ovation, please, with a standing ovation, we welcome to the podium the man for the moment, the man that we are all here to celebrate and honor, the 61st birthday man whose heart warmeth every other thing, the papa himself, Honorable Kennedy. Thank, thank you very much. I don't know what to say. Uh, first, I want to say a big thank you to the organizers, and this is a big surprise. I've never seen such a thing in my life of 61 years. Safo, you've done well. Thank you very much. I thank all my friends who are here, MPs, ministers, and students, and the pro vice for making today a great day for me. Once again, I say thank you. I think I'm fortunate. Why I'm fortunate is that many people do great things and they are only remembered when they die. But I've been fortunate to see what will happen when I die. Once again, I say a big thank you to all of you that have made it possible to be here. It's simple. I just have to share my life story to the youth who think there is no hope. There is hope. If a poor son family in Japan today stand before all of you, then you, at the age between 20 and 26, that you are in this university or institution, I share with you and encourage you that you will do better than me because I never went to 
Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I think at that, that portion, you were referring to my good friend, Kwame Nkrumah. I went to university at the age of 33. After driving taxi, working at a gas station, bakery, I decided to go to university. And the reason was that in 1992, I sponsored Professor Edouard. Myself, Dr. Preku, and my boss, Noya Kodiora from the CBU, were in his house at the airport. And he, he was sure that he was going to win. So he was forming his cabinet. And at that age, I had contributed immensely towards his campaign. So I was thinking, at least, I will be made a deputy minister. And in his room, I saw the list. I didn't know the man is a prophet or was a prophet then. I took offense. That is why I went to university. Because Professor Eduardo Chapman here said, young man, you're going to be a good businessman. I didn't understand. I thought maybe that time I had not gone to university. Yes, a cis woman, maybe I didn't qualify to be a minister. Not knowing he saw something in me. I wish today is alive for him to see that young man he tapped, he showed us that time. So after struggling in 1992 and we lost the election, I decided to go to school. Forum University, and even that. When I was at Forum University, I had over one million dollars in my account at a great bank in Ghana here, and my business, as you grow and come up, or my colleagues here that are into business will tell you, the level of dishonesty in this country when you are doing business. In my absence, those are left behind, collapse my business. And I had to leave. So I stopped the school. The third year, going to fourth year at 3.8, and twice appearing on American Who is Who, I left. And I remember my dean, Professor Houston, calling my house, telling my wife to convince me to come back to school. Another thing that inspired me to stop the school was that. My professor, economic professor, introduced me to a company called Smith Bank. Uh, that was Solomon and Solomon. Today, Smith Bank. And they agreed with me, the third year student, to pay me $120,000 then. Myself and one colleague, may you so rest in peace, Atta from Atresia, who also got opportunity to work with at and t Atta was 120 and they offered me 89 until I finished. So I went back home and asked my wife, so you mean after going to school all this work, I will come back home with 89,000 and even minus Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam is the tax you have to pay. So I'm not going to take home 89,000. At the same time, prof, my business was collapsing. So I was in a crossroad, whether to finish or leave and go and do my business. If I had completed the foreign investing, I would have been in jail. You know why? Because I introduced the U.S. lottery first in Ghana here. And my Workers were collecting $5,000, giving receipts in my company name and depositing the money into their own accounts. And they could not even deliver. I had only purpose of why the people paid the five. The final year, one year, God knows how. So I was owing a lot. And they could not. And therefore, if I had continued to the final year, one year, God knows how much I'll be <laughs> in debt I will be. So I decided to come home. And 
young men and women listening to me, honesty pays. I came back, all the money that they've collected, I had to refund the money from the money that I had saved with that great bank to have my peace. Today, I tell you, all of them are dead broke because of dishonesty. They are all dead broke. And I have survived because of honesty. <laughs> I am interested in the youth because I've realized in this country, politics especially, is dividing this country. Politics is dividing this country. And as a result, I see young men and women coming to me with their applications looking for jobs. And I will start by saying that the students here take your destiny into your own hands and sky will be the limit. Government cannot employ all students, 100,000 students graduating every year don't expect that government, no country, that the government employs almost all the students or the labor force. I believe government has to do its part. Government has to be responsible by creating an enabling environment for conducive businesses, I mean, conducive environment for people, entrepreneurs to take over and also create jobs to employ or absorb the students that come off to college. In Ghana, we have about 900,000 government employees. And we have over five, six million young men and women, the labor force I'm talking about, looking for jobs. So if you want to succeed in life, today, Use me as an example that a poor soul that was born in a I carried my chop box and trunk from a for city to Atsadi College, Cape Coast. Today, because we have good road, it's 45 minutes. Now, Prof, that time it took about four hours from a for city to Cape Coast. I got there, my hair was brown. My face was brown, everything. When I say brown, you understand, dust. The senior looked at me and called me, hey, come here. What is your name? Say, Kwame Japan. Where are you from? Asidom. And he stared at me, where is Asidom? Say, somewhere. Say, a fool, a You know, I you look at my trunk and chop box, it was painted with dust. But we survived. We survived with perseverance. You now you see what we call Dadama. Some of the students, Saturdays, I remember very well. Some, in fact, when I was in London about two years ago, a friend of mine confessed to me that he was going to chase a girl in Wesley Girls and he had to go and borrow a spotless white share from one of our classmates. <laughs> I could not. In the first place, I seen Dumpin English and Wesley Girls English. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> they would not even look at you. So I was always sticking to my books, chewing baba. Because the English sometimes <laughs> From that village, you don't even understand. <laughs> but you have to chew a paw. I could memorize it and give you ditto ditto. But, but Beth, I can tell you, from at one C1 all the way to the end, it is when I went to university, then I could understand what I was actually chewing in at Southern College. But I chewed to pass. <laughs> you know. With all this, you see friends, weekends, I will not mention it, it's not nice. They will come with their parents, luxury cars, and I remember one of them 
to put the car on reverse and it says, attention please, this car is coming back. <laughs> attention please, this car is coming back. And we all go and surround the car looking at the <laughs> today when we see him. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard work, trust me. I'm giving you all these references for you to know that there is hope if you take your destiny into your own hands and work hard. You can't sleep. You can't rely on government for everything. You can't rely on Kenya Japan for everything. You have to start something. Last week we were at a funeral and my good friend, His Excellency, was telling me, oh, as for the PK, you were lying. And I had to demonstrate to him. I had it on a plate, a bigger one. We have PK here, Tetra blade here, Nazareth is also a blade, rub, and chocolate. So I'm going to Mr. Bryant's place. I'll show you. Yes, PK, chocolate, Tetra, Nazareth, yes, rub. <laughs> you know. And on vacation, I'll go to the airport and be selling my PK and I'll see my classmates going to London. <laughs> but one day I came back and told my mother, I'm not going to sell the PK. I came God. God doesn't like me. <laughs> not knowing God was preparing me for a place. <laughs> <And that. laughs> With that hardship and endurance, that is why I'm here today. And therefore, young men and women, never be solely headed that you've been to university and therefore your success is determined. It is not true. You have to work at it. And if you want to succeed in life, first thing in life is honesty. You have to be honest. A lot of people, when they are given opportunity, they try to steal, they try to be honest. The dishonest ones, it doesn't end well for them. So key to success, First thing is honest. Second, hard work. I hope you are taking notes. Because those who think at the end of your education you're going to be rich because you have a degree from EPS and it's not true. Education will help you to analyze your expenditure, the revenue coming in, and all those things. But if you are not honest in your dealings, I'm afraid you will not succeed. If you are not hard working, you will not succeed. Hard work in terms of what? Before I bought the taxis that they were talking about, I was working at the gas station and at the same time, bakery. Zaro bakery. Zaro bakery, 40 hours, I was making $120 a week take home. And my rent was $432. So if I'm earning 480 and I don't have extra job, I'll be left with what? About $48. So I had to do extra job by taking another job at Gasiteria gas station. And there, Monday, eight hours, Tuesday, eight hours, Wednesday, eight hours, Thursday, eight hours, Friday, eight hours, Saturday, 24 hours, Sunday, 24 hours, making 88 hours a week plus the Zaro Bakery, 40 hours a week, making 128 hours a week, and I was earning $400 a week, a guy without green card. That time, those with green card and American passports or American citizens, they would go to Ward of Astoria or Hemsley Place, do their eight hours, come back for their Core 45 or Old English and they'll be enjoying themselves. That time, I'll be working. Through that, I bought my first taxi. And every day, 
I saved hundred dollars. Thirty days, three thousand dollars. I'll go to New Jersey and buy an old car, either Caprice or Impala, Chevy Caprice or Chevy Chevy Impala. Then I'll go to my insurance company, insure it, and partition. You partition it because. You don't take time, somebody will give you a shot and that's it, you're dead. So I partition the taxi with insurance registration on the road and they pay $40 a day. No excuse. If my car breaks down, bring it to me, let me take it to the mechanic. If you take it to the mechanic, I'm afraid I'm not going to accept it. I'll take my $40. In seven months, I had paid taxes. Eight. So I was making three hundred and eighty dollars a day. You go and make hundred. The seven taxes give me two hundred and eighty. I bought my first out of East Legon, seventeenth April, nineteen eighty-eight. I was twenty-eight years. I bought that for my parents when they were sacked from Flagstar House. The Jubilee House now was for army officers. The Dobrius. That's where my parents were staying. My stepfather couldn't build. So they moved them, pushed their things outside. Fortunately for me, Azuma Nelson came to America with his good uh, managers. So I pleaded with them. I gave them the first 16,000. In fact, they looked for the property for my parents to move in. And I gave the balance. And that time, at age 28, at the, the same, same time, time, in 1988, I bought my first house in America, 624 Commonwealth Avenue. The down payment was $69,000 at that time. The cost of the property was two hundred and twenty. I remember Chase Bank. They were talking to me on the phone. He was tell for my deep assets. And look at the paper, the age was 28. He asked me, are you an African? I said, yes. Where are you from? Ghana. What work do you do? I said, I drive tax. And we are buying this house? I said, yes. That is 28. My house was just next to Jennifer Lopez's parents. That was 622. They were 622 Commonwealth Avenue, and I was 624 Commonwealth Avenue. Went on and on and on. Here we are today. So that poor boy, they were calling the phone when I, I raised my hands to answer questions. All the students would turn and look at me because I was the tallest and the oldest. I went to school at the uh, secondary school at the age of 16, whilst got the sons and the rest were age 10 and 11. So when I raised my hands to answer a question, they all turned. Why be a Japan? I knew Blofu Chebe. You know, uh, today they are proud of me. My classmates are really proud of me. And I thank them for that. So, come here, Japan, a fool, a new bluff, whichever. Look at the people here. Yes, pay attention just to listen to me. Trust me, you can do it and do it better. It's just determination. You have to think big, dream big, talk big. Because in our society, when you dream big, your friends will tell you, oh, this guy is too new, he talks too big, he can't do it. Never keep, I'm giving you my strategy, never keep things to yourself. Tell the deputy minister sitting here that I can a Japan, I'm going to build a 45 bedroom house and read my lips, I'll build it. But the moment you tell her, if you are not able to do it, you have failed. So by telling her or telling a second person becomes a challenge to you and you have to fulfill all the things that you have said that you're going to do it. So tell somebody that one day I will be somebody and you will be somebody if you are determined. Say after me, one day, one day, one day, one day I will be somebody. I will be somebody. Tell your friend. One day, one day, I will be somebody. And you will. 
the world. Don't give up in life at all. Whatever challenges you are going through today, turn all your negatives to be positive by enduring the challenges and standing up to the challenges. It is not going to be smooth. Life, what I call life and success, is like multitudinous in Canada. Multitudinous in Canada. It's like weights, goes up, it comes down, and it goes up. If you go up and come down, you better get up, boy. If you don't get up, that's the end of you. But when you get down, it's the experience. When you get up again, you don't want to come down because when you were there, the terrible things you went through becomes a lesson to you. Friends that you buy beer for them to drink, when you get broke, the things they will say about you all becomes a lesson that you will not want to get to that level again. And when you begin, you begin to think positively like that, trust me, you're going to succeed. And all those friends who are laughing at you, one day you invite them again. Now you tell them to their face, you. I will tell you straight away, you know, whatever you said about me 10 years ago when I was broke, I know, but eat, drink, and go. But you have taught me a lesson. That is why I've succeeded. Life is how you make it. Nobody can do it for you. See, I always tell my children that I may there one day, and when I'm dead and gone, because you did not go through the hardships I went through, you might not be able to sustain the wealth I've left behind. So I'm teaching them, teach them the hard way make a mistake, you're out. One strike, you're out. So, fortunately for me, I have many children. <laughs> so, parable of the sower. Some will fall on the wayside, others will germinate, and you move on. I'm inculcating discipline into them. I don't want them to be solely headed like those kids who were driving their father's cars. Attention, please, this car is coming back. You know, my son is here. We went to Dubai. He used his own money to buy his second car. I said, good. As my brother came to me and said, oh, this is your Mercedes that you are not using. Why don't you give it to your son? I said, you see, you are older than me, but I have to tell you, you are foolish. <laughs> you are foolish. That is why all your children have not succeeded. I should give my S class to my son. When he graduated, I'm not the same school with you were. Well, that's where he did his masters. Well, I bought him a first car. And his second car, he has to work and buy it himself. My brother was telling me, oh, give him your Mercedes S500. I said, me? S500? I was carrying water 6 a.m. in the morning. And he got the first car. Me, I wore shoe at the age of 16. 16. When I was going to secondary school, even that I had some severe beatings from my father. <laughs> but I didn't know he was going to London that time, and that time he didn't need a visa. He only need money. And that poor teacher, I don't know, he didn't have money. He went and he was deported. So he, he brought his hunger <laughs> back to Kumasi. <laughs> And we were children of teachers. That time, all my friends, their parents have bought them shoes. So when you go to their house, then they'll go and bring the shoe. Hey, this is what my father bought me. That time, my father probably was in London airport being deported. I didn't know. So when he came and I said, I want your shoe, I remember very well. Kumasi Home Stores. That was the first time they opened Kumasi Home Stores. We went there, we couldn't get the shoe. And I said, I won't go home. So they convinced me to go home in a week. 
later. I had severe beatings and they took me to uh, my village. When my auntie saw the clothes I was wearing, he asked me, what's your problem? Ah, I can't take this. Straight, he put me in a train, slipper, from Takurani to Accra, to my mother. When my mother saw me, she asked, what is wrong with you? She said, I want shoe. And she started crying. That's it, that's all. And there's a shop opposite her place, Sika Ufie. So he went there and bought me my first shoe when I was going to Asabi College. So now you, you finish investing, you have your own car. You spoil the car, you want me to buy you another one. Wow, it all happened. happen. <laughs> we went to Dubai, he came to me, oh, daddy, I bought a car. Now he's so chiseled, he doesn't want to spend. <laughs> See, he doesn't want to spend his money. First, at ease, oh, daddy, then they'll be doing this. One day, he was arrested by the police. They called me from America. Hey, my father is going to this and that. They called me and said, huh, yes, let me talk to the police officer. The police officer explained to me. I said, I'll lock him up. <laughs> they lock him. My friend had to beg me for three hours. I said, no, I just turned off my phone. So I don't know how he got out. See, this is how, this is how I trained my kids. And now he's doing very well. See, they have organized this beautiful things here. I say thank you to Kenneth and Safo and Oman FM, Ken City Media. You guys have done very well. So youth, in this country, we are rich. We can be successful, but we need to take our destiny into our own hands. Let us challenge ourselves as human beings, and we can do it. Now, all of you are going to check singing and chanting for God to give you what? Well, God is listening to everybody in the world. All the people are chanting. Are you the only person chanting? <laughs> no. He has given us brains. If God wanted us to chant 24 hours, he would have created us just like animals and these bears flying all over the place. They don't plant anything. They go there, they eat, and they go to bed. God has created us as superior human beings. Wake up in the morning and ask yourself, ask God, is that the image of you? You said you've created me in your own image. So I want to know, God, if this is the image of you in me, then show me the way also to make it in life. <clears throat> Challenge the odds, the superstition. When you start business, it's not going to be easy. Problems are going to come. Challenges are going to come. But strike hard when the iron is hot. And don't rely on any pastor for your destiny. The moment you go to the pastor, I have a, a reverend here. We had a fantastic program before I left for Dubai. The moment you go, you, you, he knows that you are vulnerable. So they begin to put fear in you. They begin to put fear in you. So whatever they ask you, you give it to them. By the time you realize you are broke, and if you doubt me, when you go to the churches, you who go to church seven days in a week, 365 days in a week, the very day I go to the church, they will, I'll be giving the front pew. But they know and the Japan has come. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to Methodist Church in Kokomlemi, my mother's church, before she died. I went there and the pastor uh, the priest said, Oh, and then you can in Japan have any yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when they were giving their collection or whatever they call, they started from ten thousand. So I gave a check, 10,000 cities. Then it came to 5,000, and one woman gave it. The rest, they couldn't, then they came to 500, 200, they were clapping, they were clapping. So 
when you go to two cities, you saw a lot of people coming out with their two cities. And the whole church was quiet. One city, quiet. 50 persons, quiet. Okay. Then, chairman of the occasion, I had to talk. And I said, I'm very, very disappointed in Methodist Church. And because of your behavior today, I'm going to Methodist Church again. <laughs> Because the first time I entered here, you said, oh, today can I just a buy a here? But the first year, and this kind of man, and yet no. But I see that old lady coming with one CD, with joy in her face. God will bless her more than me. But you didn't say that to them. So, he said, oh, we apologize. Let us clap for those who <laughs> my mother, my mother swore never to invite me again. <laughs> you know, so my reference is that all of you that go to church 24 7, I go once a year when I'm invited. When I go there, I'll be given the best seat because I worked hard. And that day, all the 365 days collection you've given to the church, I can give two times more than that. And therefore, I'll be giving the best place. So why can't you be one of those guys who can also go there and give the best offering? You can only do that when you work hard. So please, let's take our destiny into our own hands. There is no witch anywhere. But if only baby, when you fail in life, then you attribute it to your grandmother. You fail in life. You attribute it to your father. When you were smoking jar, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, today, I'm a morning chore, eh, this. Was your grandmother there? <laughs> Was he there? Yeah. When you were stealing from your boss and you got fired, was your grandmother there? So please, I don't believe in those things. No witches in the world. And came a wood that did it. Got the way around my mouth. <laughs> if indeed there's witches that you, you claim to be, where would I be? No. You just have to take your destiny into your own hands. Challenge yourself. I'm doing what I'm doing today. I went to 37 military hospital and I said, I'm going to build ultra modern cardiothoracic center for Ghana. I was yearning to do this because we have to prove to Ghanaians and ourselves that we can make it without a white man. Let's challenge ourselves that we can do it. I went there, the architect brought a design and he said 45 bedroom, how much? Two million dollars. I started laughing. <laughs> said that's all. Kolebu, what is the size of the cardiothoracic center there? He said 30 beds. He said double it. Or give me two and a half size of that. <laughs> so today I cut a sword for 80 beds. <laughs> I've given them a deposit. And I have one year to pay $3 million to finish the project with equipment. And trust me, I'm going to do it. And I'll do it. <laughs> Doctors, they crack their brains, work steady, and they don't pay them well. They wanted just $11,000 to go for training for six months to come and man this facility and they don't have 11,000. For one year, seven doctors can afford $11,000 each. I calculate this, 11,000 times seven is 77. I say, I'll give you 100,000. Put the rest of allowance. I got this inspiration from a family. When my father was sick and admitted at St. Barnabas Hospital in New Jersey, Whilst he was in the room, I was reading what is on the board. 
And the story goes like a couple, husband and wife, built the whole hospital, although they've expanded it, they built the whole hospital for even me or I, the African, has benefited from there. So why can't I do the same for my country? I'm doing this for my country. No politics. NBC, MPP, CPP, we are all bogus. <laughs> we are all bogus. We are polarizing the country. And it's about time that we speak and criticize ourselves. And make sure we change the destiny of the youth of this country. I live for you. To live for your brother too. That's the only way we can change this, the destiny of this country. Talking plenty, criticizing, good things being done in this country, you get your opponent to turn it around and destroy the good intention of whatever you want to do. That must stop. Move this country. Setting the pace and challenge for you, the youth. That if that poor boy from Asin Dompim has done it, you can do it better. <laughs> if that poor boy who could not speak English, anytime you raise your hand and who blow food your hey, today, I raised three million dollars at ease. A PK seller and a graduate like you, you would do far better than me. <laughs> so you should have hope. You have hope that the future will be bright. You are not going to be like this for the rest of your life. If you work hard, you don't cheat people. I tell the guys all the time, now look, even when you are in the mood of having sex with your wife, a call will come. Can I Japan? Your money is ready. I say, honey, you got, you got to wear baby. You got to take that money. When I come back, fresh mind, good heart, I give you good sex. <laughs> so, you have to marry your job. That is what I mean. Marry your job. And your wife and family will be happy. And some of you will tell you, oh, <clears throat> Hey, my wife and the family are home. I have to go home. When there's money to be made, I quit Jimmy. Just pick a phone. Honey, you know what? I got some deal on the table here. Let me finish before. I'm going to be late for an hour or two. Finish the deal. You go home. Money is on the table. When I got you, I said, oh, don't go out. When money is on the table, I've seen a nice lady who had come to complain to me that she is getting divorced. Why? Said the husband cannot take care of the family. I said, Wow, sky moja bow. Oh, Drani Akachua so money is not anything. When I catch you, read Ecclesiastes 10 19. It says food is for laughter, wine is for merrymaking, and money answers it all. When you do that, you work out, you make the money, you go to church on Sunday, you also give some to God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not against worship. No. Any man who says there's no God, to me, you are a fool. If you don't you want to know God, just sleep. When you are tired and you sleep, ask yourself, when you were asleep, where were you? That body that is talking to everybody here, I go to bed and I'm nobody. That alone tells me there's a superior being. The superior being that I don't know is God, whatever you call it. So I believe in God. But I don't want to be over-reliant on God for everything. That is the problem I have in this country. We are over-reliant on God for everything. 
the white man brought this Christianity. Go to Germany and check how many people go to church. Go to England, check. Go to US, check. And we are always in the church. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my house in Kema. Monday, I'll see, especially the lady. I'm going to my site as early as five. The school filled. I said, gee. So I was with a Chinese lady and she asked me, what are they saying? I said, well, <laughs> I explained to her what they were doing. I said, oh, so you think uh, Satan is only in Ghana? So they want to arrest the Satan here. Satan will not be in China or what? You see, simple breakdown of your stupidity. The day God rested, he said, he created this world in six days and the seventh day he rested. Yes. So you can go to church. If you are SDA Saturday, if you are Methodist or whatever, Sunday, no problem. But seven days, ladies and gentlemen, trust me, you're not going to make it. I'm sorry my good friend is here, but he is open-minded because he's finance guru. He understands. He got the calling to serve the Lord. That is why he is different. And he understands my angle where I am coming from. A lot of these pastors, I'll give you an example. Obinim is not, is not my enemy. My stepfather and Obinim's father are from the same family, their first cousins. The question I ask, I'll go to the funeral. I'll go, because my stepfather says we should go. I'll go. But the question is, why is it that if Obinim has powers, his father was dying and he couldn't heal him, but when you are sick, he says he can heal you. You are stupid. Very, very stupid. If charity begins at home, if he has that powers to heal you, let him heal his father first. As simple as that. So please, I am not against God, but I, I'm worshiping hard work. I'm sitting here, what the VC said, uh, Pro Vice Chancellor said, took my mind off the thinking. I was thinking, if you observe, I was touching here, touching, plants look dorsal. But when Pro Vice started talking, I was paying attention and I forgot about whatever I was thinking. You have to think. Plan your life, how you are going to make it. And trust me, you will make it too. God that you worship will not let your toil be in vain. You will make it. So as a country, I am interested in the youth because you are the future of this country. My uncle, who was a village king, meaning in terms of education. He attended just commercial school and working at Ghana Commercial Bank. We visited his house. He was heavily drunk. His wife was so beautiful, very nice. But he sucked us from his house. He did not see the future in us. I took three of his kids to America. I took three of his kids to America. That is why I have faith in the youth. That time I was young. He did not think through it. He could not foresee that one day this young man can be somebody. That is why I'm interested in the youth, sharing my experience with you. That you can make it in life. You just have to be determined. Work hard. You have to be sincere in your dealings with your superiors. They'll call you names. They discourage you. Just be a fool for a while. And you will be leading a leader of the wise men. Be a fool for a while in any institution that you are. 
eventually you'll be rewarded by your hard work and your foolishness as they perceive you to be. And you, the fool, will rule the wise people because of their dishonesty. So please, it is not by magic that you are here listening to me. I'm sharing my experience with you to encourage you that there is light. Honorable, is it under the tunnel or it should be straight? <laughs> we all have future. We should know how to manage our life to bring out the gift that God has given us, the talent that God has given us. If you sit in one place, you allow God to do this as they receive you to be fair. And you, the fool, I use Ooh, the, the Bible wife. again, the last one, and I'm done. Of the parable of the talent. So please, the significance of the parable of the talent is that God help those listening to themselves. I'm sharing my one day I was listening to a debate between Kwesi Prat and Kwekuba. There is light. And Kwekuba said, in the Bible, it says God help those who help themselves. <laughs> and Kwesi Prat said, there is nowhere in the Bible that says God help them, those who help themselves. I said, Kwesi Prat, he doesn't know the Bible. He has a literal meaning. If you're a theologian, then you read and know the significance of that parable. It says, the rich man was traveling and he gave his three servants money. When he came back, he asked the first one, so I was afraid. The parable of the talent. Hit it. The significance of that parable The second one. That God asked him, What did you do? Oh, I managed, I got this one day. I was listening to a debate. The third one, said, Yes, and what did you do? And I doubled said, the money in the Bible. Gave me. Says God the Bible says, The one who Christy was Pratt afraid said, of his boss, the master, the Bible he took the money. God and God said, it, The word God is proportionate, not he has a literal meaning. He shared it among the two proportionately. And no nature will say, says, oh, Jimmy, fact, the we say, and shall them from and expect manna to come from heaven. Money. So when he came back, he asked the first so I was afraid. Turn your life around. Uh, hey, when God sees that me. seriousness in you, the second one uplift you. He asked me, what you did you do? Oh, will be the shine and the glory of God to the rest of the people. As you are celebrating me today. I doubled the money Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible of says this country, the one who was afraid of his boss, to own house. Master, he took the don't money. Don't rely on government for everything. Don't, don't rely on your parents for everything. Go now you are mature. Go out there. Share any job, the two, any job that will sustain you, say, put your education aside. Home, Jimmy, you take it. And share with them from and expect money and because to come you are educated, you'll be so able to you analyze your situation better than those who are parents who when not God sees get that seriousness in you, to go to school. That is the essence of education. And you, it is important. The shine and the glory but of if you say the rest of that, oh, I'm a graduate, the there's no job. The ah, why should I take this job? I'm not going to do Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you chew your certificate. Let's take our destiny. Yeah, but when you start small, don't rely on government start for small. everything. Don't you will get there. If you are lucky, now you are mature. Mature to get go out there employed. Any job, what you have to do job is prove yourself you. Put your to your boss. Let Put them know you. what when? you don't know. Feel free to ask and because how it is clean, done. You'll be able to analyze I'll tell you a story. You won't believe it. A whole human being did that. I gave a scholarship to three kids to to in my constituency. And I wanted to give them exposure. The guy was in my office as a secretary. No, I'm a trying to help me. There's no job. Secretary. One day, I drank coffee and there were things in my cup. I asked the guy to go to the cup. I don't know what happened to me. I entered the bathroom. I was using the toilet brush. What you have to do is I swear to God, cleaning my cup. Let them know that is how what dumb. you don't know. Feel free to he ask. Was. How but I dumb. forgave him because of where I picked him. I gave a scholarship. I'm going to change this guy. I sat him down. I explained to him, this is for toilet. And this is for 
the I wanted to give them exposure. The guy there yeah, is a graduate working. He secretary. calls me from time to time. Honorable Ford Mechi. I'm saying, how are you doing? What did you learn from me? I've learned a lot. Yes. That time, if I had been mad and said, that get out from my office, I would have done a disservice to that young man because he was innocent and ignorant. Not that he he used the my toilet brush to that is clean how my cup. He was. So this is how bad some of us from the areas I said, I'm going we to change this guy. encounter challenges. I'm going to change this guy. We are not exposed to down a lot of things. This is for toilet. So you this is for the cup. getting the opportunity to graduate west. He calls me trust time to time. You can do oh, better than Kenny How are you doing? What did you learn from me? You can also that do time, worse than can in Japan. When you become fully headed, yeah, I'm I'm the graduate from UPSA. I don't, I don't want this job. Uh, graduated in business administration. Not that. Uh, uh, at the time, you, you realize I'm selling Bruni Wewu in Bale. My car. I'll be selling Bruni Wewu so in Bos. How Bos bad? Level. Some of us from and the you still be holding your certificate. Encounter the administration or whatever. We are not exposed to a lot of things. So, if so you, you complete your education, get in you look for job, opportunity to come to and you best. don't trust anything, you can do better. Try than you can do Even if you are a You can also do worse than you can do Build the business. One day, yeah, you'll be a big businessman. Employ classmates who wanted to be employed by uh, government. And the time you when I was leaving for that university, I'm going to end here. I'll be selling really well with host, Apparently, host my level. wife and you so was not happy your certificate. the fact that I was a sister man. All her family, they are graduates, RP Buffalo's so family. If you yeah, graduate. So one case. day I came Look to Ghana job. and my resource and don't went home How in America. She took it and opened it. Even then I had five days from that put your semester. Aside. And she had told all oh, the cousins. So Build anybody who calls me said, Oh, congratulations. Big, big and and employ information for that. What? Classmates so had five days. Who wanted so, ah, is that why you're like congratulating government. me? So all along, when I was you ladies that, thought, I'm dumb. Apparently, yeah. my wife. So when I was, was not leaving the school, the fact that I and was the dean woman, called my wife to talk to all me, her family, I said brothers, to her, beautiful lady, so one day, Madam Agua Fritwa Stella Wilson, a Japan. I want to assure you. I want to assure you. And I had five days. Not, I don't have a degree, but semester. one day. And she had told all PAs, her cousins. masters, PAs. So to anybody work who calls me, say, oh, congratulations. Then I ask. Congratulations. And I have that. done what? exactly oh, you that. Have five days. Ah, is that why you're congratulating me? I have so done exactly that. All along, that. you ladies thought, trust me. I'm dumb. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. do it. You are the so future of this country. Leaving the school. Work hard. The dean be honest. My wife to talk to me. Save money. I see. Madam Angela Fritz Today, Wilson. All Japan. the girls are looking at you. I want to assure you. So you are so I ready. You. Go and re uh, and I don't have a watch this one. Day. Scarface. I'll employ BAE. They Master. were two friends. BAE. Political BAE. refugees in Cuba. And they went to America. Man was so and handsome. Done Wherever done he goes, done. chasing the girls. Told him. I've done that. A friend told him, that's Al Pacino. He said, and he told we him, are political refugees from Cuba. A friend First, told him, have to make the money. He said, and you have the money, you we have are political power. refugees have from power. Cuba. You have the women. First, have to make the money. When you have the and money, you have the All money. those you have who the are power, borrowing shares to go women. to Wesley girls, the girls don't even want to see them. And on my phone, I don't talk. Ladies, I don't know. I call her we met you. Rats. On my phone, I don't talk. Ladies, I don't know. I call her we met you. So the time that we are going to spend on women, the time that we are going to spend on men, 
concentrate so on education. The time that we are going to spend on time women, come. the time that we are going to spend on men, prettiest woman, concentrate on your education. Bring her application. The time will come. The time will come. The richest man, the prettiest, will come, will come to you because, because you have you sacrificed, sacrificed your time, time better, better use, use of time, time in country. And your, your reward, reward will, not will not be in vain. vain. But if, but if you spend, spend all, your, all your, time your time chasing girls, girls women, women, men, men young, young men, men trust, trust me, you waste, waste your time. time. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things shall be added unto thee. On earth, seek ye first capital, and the rest shall follow. On this note, I want to end here and say a big thank you to all of you for listening to my nonsense. God bless all of you.